You might recall back in your uh, Gen Chem 1 doing thermochemistry um, type problems, and in there we did something with Hess's law where you took reactions and you summed them, and if they equaled up to that equation, you added the delta H's and it gave you the overall H for that reaction. You may also recall that when you um, multiply by a factor across the equation, you also multiplied the delta H by that factor as well because of the extensive property. Um, we also, if we took a reaction that was endothermic one way, if we flipped the reaction, it became exothermic. Okay, the opposite process happened, so we changed the delta H to by sign. We have a similar thing happening with K values that we can do, but the, the math is different, so the way that you change the, um, the K value also changes as well. So you have to make sure that you understand that when you're dealing with, electro, when you're dealing with um, thermal chemistry stuff, you have one way of manipulating equations, and when we're dealing with Ks, is a different way because of the mathematics behind it. And I'll show you that as we go through the, the rules. So let's talk about the rules. They're a little bit different from manipulating K. Now, as we go through this K stuff, I want you to realize that these changes of the equation happens on this homework assignment and what we're talking about here. When we actually work in our equilibrium problems, we're not going to be doing this. We're going to handle those equations just as they are, written left to right, with the products being in the numerator and the reactants being in the products. But if you happen to want to switch the reaction, flip it or invert it or something, then you're going to have to change the K by the following rules. Okay, First one. Say I had a reaction going to products, and the K is equal to, we know, products over reactants. If I wasn't able to flip this reaction, I mean physically flip it now, and now change it and say products now are going to reactants, well, the K now you would have in your numerator, your reactants, and then your denominator, the products. Well, the K associated with that second equilibrium, that second equilibrium is going to have to be different because now your reactants are enumerated and your products are in the denominator. So in essence, what happens is this is equal to 1 over K. It's the reciprocal. So if you reverse a reaction, the invert of the value of K, referred to as the reciprocal rule, it's 1 over K. So if you flip the reaction, you have to change the K. And that's only if you physically flip the reaction. You can still look at the reaction going from products to reactants the same way it's written, as we're going to do as we work uh, equilibrium problems. But if you physically flip it, then you have to re do the reciprocal of K. Now, what happens when you multiply by a factor? Uh, remember, when you did it in thermal chemistry, you had to multiply delta H as well. But this one's a little different because of the math involved. We're talking about here reactants going to products which you know K is equal to P over R, okay? Now what happens if I was to come in here and say, okay, let's multiply everything by a factor of two? Well, what happens to your K expression? Well, that coefficient now becomes that power, right? So now it'll be P to the square and R to the square. So in essence then, my K is gonna be to the square as well. So what you have is, if you multiply or divide each of the coefficients in the equation by some factor, the same factor, you raise Kc to that same power. This is known as the coefficient rule, k to the n. So you put it to the power. You don't multiply it, you put it to that power. When you finally combine, meaning add up your individual reactions, you add them up just like you did with delta H. However, what do you do with the K's is different than when you do with delta H's. Remember, delta H's, you added them up. K's are going to end up being the product of the equilibrium constants to obtain that overall K. The, raw, the rule of multiple equilibrium, basically K1 times K2 times K3 equals your K total. And I'll show you why that is when we do the example. Okay, let's use our um, new rules with K and try to answer the following question. Our goal in this problem is, is that we want the overall reaction of dinitrogen oxide plus a half oxygen gives me two nitric oxides. I want to know what is the K for that reaction. For maybe some reason I can't find it or I can't do it experimentally, but I can go to the table and find some reactions and see if I can sum up those reactions to equal up to this equation, and then I can solve for my K. So I have some givens. I looked them up in the table or whatever. 
Okay, following reactions, I have a half of nitrogen plus a half of oxygen gives me NO with a KC. And then I have a second one, which is nitrogen plus half of oxygen gives me N2O with a KC as well. I want to manipulate those two equations and have them equal to the bottom equation that I'm looking for. Okay, the di-nitrogen oxide plus a half of oxygen gives me two nitric oxides. The way that we're going to do this is we try to find a species that's involved in one of the reactions of the givens just by itself in one of those reactions. I don't want anything that has is involved in one or more of the equations because then it gets more difficult to do things. For example, in this case, oxygen. I see that oxygen is in the first equation as well as the second. So I'm going to avoid that and try to concentrate on things that appear once in those equations and have that dictate to me what to do to my equation. Because if that's the only place it's located, then if I get it correct to the right number of moles in the correct location, then I'll have that equation taken care of. So I'm going to look for a species that's involved in one. So let's go left to right. Let's start off with my dinitrogen oxide. Okay, my question is, okay, can I find dinitrogen oxide somewhere in these equations where it's by itself not involved in a couple of reactions? Okay, and the answer is yes. I can see it in that second equation. Okay, I see it's part of that second equation. Once I have found that in only one equation, I'm going to ask myself two questions. The first question I'm going to ask myself, is it on the correct side? Okay, is it on the correct side? You can see in the overall balance equation I need on the reactant side, and I see on my given that it's on the product side. So no, it's not on the correct side. So I'm going to have to do something to make that happen. So what I'm going to end up doing is having to flip the reaction, okay? Because I want to get that N2O on the reactant side. But if I flip the, a K reaction, then what I got to do with the K? Exactly, I'm going to have to do the reciprocal of that K. The second question I'm going to ask myself. Is it the correct number of moles? Now, in my overall balance equation, I need one, okay, and two O. Now, if you look at your equation that is your given, you have one and two O. That is the correct number of moles. Therefore, I don't have to multiply by any factor. So, all I got to do is flip the reaction. So, in this case, all we're going to do is reverse the reaction and multiply by a factor of one, and then do the reciprocal of our K. As I said, I will skip the oxygen, and let's see if I can find nit nitric oxide somewhere, hopefully in that last equation by itself. That way I can use it to decide what to do with that equation. And if you look, yes it is, okay, uh, NO is in that last equation, okay, so I can look at that and make my decisions of what I'm going to do. So once again, two things. Number one, is it on the correct side? Number two, is it the correct number of moles? So, is nitric oxide on the correct side that I need in my overall balance equation? Is it the correct side on that given equation? And the answer is yes. In both cases, it's on the product side, which means I don't have to reverse the equation. Next question is, is it the correct number of moles? I need two moles of NO in my overall balance equation. How many do I have in my given? I only have one. That means I'm going to have to multiply that by some factor, which is going to be two to get it to be the correct number of moles. But that means I'm going to have to multiply everything by 2. Okay, I'm going to have to multiply the nitrogen by 2, the oxygen by 2, the NO by 2. But what do we do to our K when we do that? I'm going to have to take that and go to the power of 2. So same side, but we're going to multiply by a factor of 2. Okay, so what we said was we're going to take this first equation and multiply by 2. Okay, and then when I do that, I get the following. I, 2 times a half gives me 1 and 2. 2 times 1 half oxygen gives me O2. And 2 times NO gives me 2 NOs. And then I'll take that K and square it, which gets me 4.1 times 3 times 10 to the negative 31. Second equation, we said we were just going to flip it. Okay, so I'll flip the equation. What now gives me N2O gives me N2 plus one half O2, and we will take the reciprocal of that K, which again gives me 4.2 times 10 to the 17th. Now I just have to add up the two equations. 
okay, and see if it gives me an equation that we're looking for. You can see here that my nitrogens cancel. I have a half of oxygen and a whole of oxygen on the reactant side, so that cancels and leaves me a half of oxygen. I bring down everything else, N2 comes down. My, my half of oxygen comes down and my two NOs come down, and I get the final overall equation as nitrogen oxide plus a half oxygen gives me two nitric oxides. Is that the equation, the equation that we're looking for for a problem? And the answer is yes. So now I have a chance of being correct on my answer. All I got to do now is manipulate my Ks, which we said, what do we do with the Ks when we're talking about overall equation? We said we multiply them. So I'll take those values. My first, my K1, where I did the res, my square, time, which is 4.1 times 10 to the negative 31. Time my second one, which we said we did the reciprocal, which is 4.2 times 10 to the 17th, which then gives me my overall answer, which is 1.7 times 10 to the negative 13th, which is the K for that reaction in question. Key here is to remember that there's different rules for K versus your, your thermal chemistry stuff. Now, I said I wanted to show you why it's multiplication and not addition, so let's do that. I'll clean up the board a little bit for can read the equations again. Uh, what I want to do is do a multiplication step here. I want to now take K1 for that first reaction and I want to write the K for it. That's your products over reactants. If I do that for that first one, K1, we see that I have the concentration of NO squared divided by my concentration of N2 times my concentration of O2. Okay, and I want to multiply that by K2. And let's look at K2, which is this one. I would have my concentration of N2 times my concentration of O2 to the one half divided by my concentration of N2O. Okay. Now, if we multiply these, what's going to happen is the nitrogen is going to cancel out. My half of oxygen will cancel out and leave me a half of oxygen, which then gives me an answer of concentration of NO squared divided by concentration of N2O divided by concentration of O2 to the one half. Now, if you were to write the... Um, Kc of the overall equation that was in question, what would you get? Look at it. It'd be the concentration of NO to the square divided by the concentration of N2O divided by the concentration of O2 to the one half, which is exactly the K oh, we get when we multiply K1 con K2, we'll get that K total of that reac re reaction. Homework 16 deals with manipulating Ks, and as I caution you, Manipulating Ks is only going to be done with this homework or we're directly talking about manipulating several Ks to get to some K overall reaction. We're not going to do that when we do our equilibrium expressions. We're going to handle those left to right just as they're reading, and we're going to put products in the product spot, which is the numerator, and reactants in the denominator. We're going to let the minus and pluses dictate the direction of the reaction, um, and we're not going to be manipulating Ks because if we do that, and then you have to change the K, and a lot of students tend to forget that. So we're going to tend to just go left to right. 